Dear all, my name is Daniel Baudry and I am a gynecologist and fertility specialist. With this video I would like to show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to perform transvaginal ultrasound-guided embryo transfer, an innovative method from Japan. Embryo transfer is the final crucial step during the complex process of IVF. Its technique has changed little over the last decades and it is probably the least studied part of the whole process. Embryo transfer should be as gentle and precise as possible to enable optimal embryo implantation. According to a recent meta-analysis, transabdominal ultrasound guidance showed a significantly improved outcome compared to the clinical touch method. Transvaginal ultrasound guidance, on the other hand, is less popular worldwide, except from Japan, where it is the routine approach at the Kato Ladies Clinic Group. In fact, the Japanese manufacturer Kitazato has developed a specifically designed embryo transfer catheter for this innovative method. So now I would like to guide you through the whole process by using some ultrasound images and the dummy demonstration. Before starting, I always strongly recommend to perform a brief and the vaginal scan to get familiar with your patient's uterus, its position, the length of the cervical canal and endometrial sickness. The cervix is cleaned according to your own protocol. You could appreciate that the Kitazato embryo transfer catheter has two parts, an outer guide and an inner catheter. The outer guide is relatively soft and has an obturator inserted in it. The outer guide is bent to 30 degrees and has a rounded bulb tip to facilitate the negotiation of the cervical canal. It also has a stopper that could be adjusted between 4 and 8 cm. The inner catheter has a distal part containing the embryo made of an extremely thin silicon material and a proximal part which is slightly more rigid for convenient holding. Next step is to canalize the cervix with the outer guide. Often you have to do a rotating movement in case of an unverted uterus from lateral to anterior position and in case of a retroverted one from lateral to posterior position. Next, the speculum has to be removed while keeping the inserted outer guide in place. With a Cusco speculum, which is not open on the side, you have to remove the speculum in a slightly opened position while gently pushing the proximal tip of the inserted outer guide through the opening. You would reach this stage with the outer guide inserted into the cervix. Next, you have to introduce the vaginal ultrasound probe while maintaining the inserted outer guide above it and not to the side or below to facilitate the introduction of the inner catheter later. You could hold the proximal tip of the inserted outer guide between your middle and index fingers and keep the vaginal probe in a ring form by your index finger and the thumb. At this position, you should check your endovaginal ultrasound image. It is important to a, obtain the best sagittal plane image possible to visualize the echogenic tip of the inserted outer guide and to make sure that the way is obstacle free for the inner catheter to advance toward the fundus. When you have confirmed this, you could signal your embryologist to start loading the embryo into the inner catheter. When the embryologist has arrived to your side, the soft obturator of the outer guide is removed and you could start introducing the distal part of the inner catheter. Because it is made of a very thin silicon material, you should always hold it in axis and forward it very gently and slowly. As mentioned before, you could hold the inner catheter at its more rigid proximal part. When you have almost introduced the inner catheter, you should advance it until a double line marking at 4 
centimeters. Now you should again obtain a perfect sagittal ultrasound image. Carefully observe the echogenic tip of the inserted outer guide and start slowly advancing the inner catheter towards the fundus. Although the inner catheter does not have any specific echogenic marking, due to the high resolution it is readily visible. You can slowly advance the inner catheter to your desired position, usually one and a half, two centimeters from the fundus. Then at the desired position you could signal your embryologist to push on the syringe and gently inject the liquid containing the embryo. If the embryo is loaded with marker air bubbles, you should see them coming out. At this moment the procedure is finished and you could gently remove the outer guide together with the inner catheter and hand it back to the embryologist for inspection. Because under direct observation embryo retention is extremely rare, there's no need to keep the outer guide in place. Now you could observe the final result of your embryo transfer and make some photos for your medical file and the patients. Because of the thin diameter of the inner catheter, the injected volume is very low, so the air marker bubbles tend to stay at the injected position and not wander around. If you have the option, you could also perform a 3D sweep to visualize the marker air bubbles on a 3D frontal plane. Let me show you an actual video of a transvaginal guided embryo transfer. You could appreciate the echogenic tip of the inserted outer guide and the inner catheter moving out slowly and advancing towards the fundus. After injection, the marker air bubbles could be readily appreciated. In comparison, this video shows a classical transabdominal ultrasound guided approach with an echogenic catheter from a different manufacturer. Although this is a very nicely documented video, its resolution cannot be compared with the transvaginal approach. So what are the potential advantages of the transvaginal ultrasound guided approach? Better visualization is obvious due to the higher resolution compared to transabdominal scanning. There's no need for a full bladder, reducing patient discomfort. There's no need for a separate ultrasound operator, you can do the transfer and scanning yourself. As you have already gathered, this method is a version of the so-called afterloading technique, a safer approach when embryos are not transferred directly. It is especially advantageous for obese patients or those with retroverted uterine where transabdominal scanning is often suboptimal. You also have the possibility to do 3D scanning or to observe uterine contractions. Regarding success rates, currently there are only three RCTs comparing the transabdominal versus transvaginal approach involving more than 600 patients. In fact, I was the first author of one of the largest trials. According to a recent meta-analysis, Success rates were not significantly different, although there was a trend in favor of the transvaginal approach. There are also some potential drawbacks. A learning curve is needed, although I am sure that all proficient operators can master this method quickly. Ultrasound visualization is not always optimal, especially in patients with intermediate position uterine, large fibroids, or when the uterine body and the cervix cannot be displayed in the same plane. You cannot just use any catheter with this method. I strongly recommend using the Kitazato embryo transfer catheter, which was specifically designed for this method and tested on tens of thousands of patients in Japan. If you anticipate difficult embryo transfer, this method is not optimal. I would stick with the classical transabdominal approach with a full bladder. I hope this video will give you some useful tips and inspire you to try out this new and innovative embryo transfer technique. Thanks for watching.